Hey, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching. It would mean the world to us if you could just scroll down, like, hit the subscribe button for the Snaps YouTube channel. It goes a long way towards helping us out. Now, let's dive into some college football. Let's talk totally about fun. Mizzou real quick here, Chase, because how about it, dude? Mm. M-I-Z-Z-O-U, the wow. fucking Tigers are back in a big yeah. way. Uh, how you feeling about how the offseason went? Um, I like it. You know, we, we lost obviously our, our DC who's boys with, with drink and Baker to yeah. LSU. Um, so you guys got a, a hell of a dude. Like, like I, I went in like, so let me just rewind. Like I, I hadn't been back to Mizzou, uh, in the non playing time in maybe 14 years. Cause I was playing oh, really? during NFL season. Oh, yeah. yeah I, mm -hmm. Cause I hadn't been back. So Obviously, first year out, I was able to go back last year in August, like early August when they were in training camp. And I was there for 36 hours and just all access, like every meeting, all the quarterback meetings. I sat in Blake Baker's meetings, um, uh, like drinks office. We were talking stress, like all sorts of stuff. I was able to, to end, the, end, the, end the session with a, a, I talked to the team for like 20 minutes. It, it was like, I mean, like it was the first time in 20, in, in like 20 years, 14 years that I'd been back just because I couldn't get back. So it was cool to see the inner workings. You could tell that they, they were going to be special, right? And that they had, they really felt good about their quarterback. And I think that was the biggest thing, right, uh, was the quarterback play that they got. And obviously everyone knows about Cody Schrader. And look, uh, D-Rob on defense is going to be drafted high. Ennis Rakestraw is going to be drafted high. Like we're going to have some guys go in the first round, I think. Uh, and it's a special time. But obviously when you lose a, a coordinator like that, um, you know, it's, it's a big deal. And, and, um, you know, when you're able to get Kirby Moore, all these guys have made such a huge difference. So it's going to be an interesting time for this off season. I know they're starting spring ball right now, but just talking with drink, like we're pretty, pretty close and pretty tight and just the yeah. direction of the program, mm -hmm. right? Like, like not only do we lose uh, like Baker, but you lose our, our AD right as well. So all that stuff matters. And I think really people are looking toward drink as sort of the the person to hold it together for now. Mm -hmm. uh, went out, hired a really good uh, DC. And, and look, we're excited about where things are going. And obviously, you know, our two losses last year were to you two guys. And I was yeah. at that game. Yeah. Uh, T Bob at no, LSU. That's was, first, that yeah. one was crazy, dude. It, well, it was it was it was when Jaden took over. Like we we were yeah. in control, mm -hmm. and Jaden just said, "Hey, you know what? I'm just going to mess around with you guys." And in the fourth quarter, like unstoppable. Yeah. And if you if you really think about it, you if we win that game, we're in the college football playoff. Yeah. Or if we beat a Georgia team, which we were, y'all were better than us that day. Like it was, it wasn't even yeah. close, obviously. But like we went toe to toe with you guys in Athens, and we played you guys two straight uh, years. Tough two straight years. So Mizzou is Kirby Kryptonite. I, I think yep. that's sort of the belief, right? Aaron, you can talk about it too. Mm -hmm. Like the belief a little bit in your program, in your players to say, hey, we can play with the LSUs. We can play with the Georgias. What we were able to do against Ohio State, and I don't care. You can't tell me one thing about who they didn't play or who they do play. Mm -hmm. When you beat Great. Ryan Day in Ohio Great. State mm -hmm. in a bowl yeah. game, like it sets the tone for this coming year. So I'm excited about that. I want to ask you about, because you and I experienced it when we were in Kansas City. Or I think it was my second year. We were overseas playing in London, and we are playing Detroit. And I memory is correct. At halftime, Coach Reed gave the play calling duties over to, to Doug. Yeah. And we went out there and dominated the second half. And then kind of from there, there was like that working relationship. I know Andy's kind of given on and off. Eli gave up the play calling duties this year, and we saw the offensive explosion. From the locker rooms you've been in and the offensive minds you've been around and head coaches that do call plays, is that going to be harder and harder to do going forward, both NFL, college, or is it mostly just going to be a little bit harder to do in college, in your opinion? That's such a good question. I I do think um, – like I, I can tell you right now, I haven't really said this to, to anyone. Um, like I, I talked to drink about that. Like that was my biggest thing is like, Hey, you're giving up play calling duty. Like, how do you feel about it? And he's like, Chase, honestly, like the guy we got Kirby Moore, like coming over, like he's got it. Like I also have my hand on it and the pulse on it. But nowadays in the age of a transfer portal, in the age mm -hmm. of where you're recruiting your own players in the age of NIL, like mm -hmm. I have so much other stuff to worry about. And quite honestly, two years ago, that sort of hurt our offense. Like we didn't, we didn't innovate enough. People mm -hmm. were starting to get us. And, and I just yeah. like appreciated the honesty to that. 
you know, and, and, and that is the case with college nowadays. It's like you got so much other stuff than the 14 games on the field you got to worry about as a head coach. And so I applaud him. I think it's great. Obviously, he still has the vision of the program, right? These CEO mm -hmm. type coaches. I think you're going to see that a lot more, especially in college. In the NFL, um, like you mentioned, Andy Reid, I, I think it's a good thing that it's a collaboration, right? Like at least mm -hmm. I can speak to Andy. There's two to three coaches on the offensive side of the ball that are in that meeting with, with Andy coming up with plays. Like everyone else brings their ideas, but at the end of the day, it's Matt Nagy. It was Eric Bieniemy when he was there, mm -hmm. and it was Andy Reid in that meeting room drawing up plays for base downs, third downs, red zone, all that stuff. So I think it's a little bit more collaboration in college, but I do think you're going to start seeing that. And as you've seen this year, the amount of college coaches leaving to go to the NFL – they all want absurd. to. Sure. Yeah, there's just limited to get spots. Out. Everybody's there's like limited the spots. Yes, because the day and age of college mm -hmm. football and how you're having to deal with stuff and how you're having to recruit your own guys now, the transfer portal, like all this stuff. I, I think it's good for college football, but you got to figure out a way to to find a fine line, or you're gonna see some of these really good coaches leaving. It's well, yeah, I mean I, I want to like, send this real quick, T sorry. You put we all play in the BCS era, and none of us play in the playoff era. Obviously, it would have benefited me, it would have benefited you to have yeah. a playoff to be able to have an opportunity. Like, do you like the overall direction? Like, you're an NFL guy, you you know, that's that's your bread and butter. But obviously, have like T Bob said, like you have this incredible history in the college yeah. space. Obviously, you know football. Is it good? We talked about it yesterday a little bit. Is it good that college football is becoming a little more like the NFL in certain aspects? Um, I, I think it is. I, I think you're seeing the game evolve in college. And and I do think, I mean, like talk, like I, I'm just going to reference uh, Coach Drink in Missouri. He's like, dude, we're yeah. going to have to hire a, ca a salary cap guy. Yes. Like, like just being 100%. completely honest with you. You got to make like, it front that's it And obviously they were at the front and forefront of that Missouri legislation to let mm -hmm. NIL and everything that they did to pass that. So he's very aware. And I think I have a very good feel on like their direction and how they're going about stuff. Um, I do think that you are taking away, obviously, some of the amateur status, right? When you're able to make this money, I do think that you're going to have to figure out a way in college football, and I'm sure you guys have talked about it like everyone else, this is like a no-duh statement, to make it fair. You can't just have these five teams out there with these collectives that are just insanely just loaded with money and say, mm -hmm. we'll pay a million dollars per player. I don't care what you do or what you, what you have. Like the Ole Miss... Dude, I, I'm sure you guys saw it. The Ole Miss quarterback, I don't even know his name because I'm not up to date. He just got a private Jackson jet. Dart. Yeah, dude, how about it, it dude? dude like, it. what? Like, good for you, but, mm -hmm. like, oh, imagine the players on these teams. Like, if you're the punter and you're like, the quarterback has a, like, oh, man. Like, all right, I got to go find something. So, I just or you got to like, be boys with the quarterback. Yeah. So I, I do <laughs> imagine, being, imagine being a quarterback line. of an SEC school. Going to the, the Kappa Delta house and saying, hey, who wants to go take a spring trip on my PJ? <laughs> Let's go to Panama City or Destin. Uh, it is it is crazy, though, because, I, I mean, I kind of feel like um, there has been I, – I don't know. I thought it was going to lead to a further concentration of power. And you're right. I mean, you look at Ohio State, 13 million roster, all that. Like, that's kind of mm -hmm. unattainable for majority of schools. But it has democratized the sport in a way that isn't bad because it opens the door for a Mizzou or an Ole Miss to yeah. say, hey, look, we have emotional buy-in. That can now become economic buy-in, and we can fucking do it, dude. A real, I want to get into prospects, but one more on Mizzou real quick here. Uh, Brady Cook. Because when you look yeah. at returning quarterbacks in the country next year, I yeah. mean – Top five, top three. What's your evaluation of Cook? I think he's a top five guy coming back this year. Honestly, like I, I do. Like I, I think so. It, as you guys are aware, this is your bread and butter college. Um, but for people out there that is following me that aren't really uh, keen on this college stuff, if you remember before uh, the start of last year, right? Drink opened up the quarterback competition and made Brady Cook sort of fight for his right to be the starter mm -hmm. at the University mm -hmm. of Missouri. And and I thought that was great, but it was just a play to be like, dude, just get your get your stuff in gear. Like, like you need to you need to pick it up. And and Coach Drink was like very honest with him. And and we talked about it too. Like, hey, dude, you need to work on your deep ball accuracy. You need to work on being a, a more vocal leader. And and you need to work on getting 
out of trouble. Don't making a bad play worse. Like, don't make a bad play worse. And I think if you look at, he really went to the lab and really worked hard on those three things. And you rewatch his film. Obviously, he has really good skill players. Luther Burden, in my opinion, is the best in the country. Like, I don't care what you say. Mm -hmm. Like, he with the ball in his hand, Luther Burden can make mm -hmm. plays happen. And I think you're starting to see that. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes about this year when teams have more film on him. And I do think that it was sort of a, a thing to where, hey, Brady really stepped, maybe not, not out of his comfort zone, but but became a more vocal leader, um, got a lot uh, more confidence? interested in winning and okay. confidence and everything like that. And I think that was the biggest thing because when I went there and I sat in these meetings – uh, uh, with the other quarterbacks, like we had like seven quarterbacks, which is like, I'm like, how many quarterbacks do you need <laughs> on a roster? But when I sat in and Kirby Moore runs those meetings and you could tell, you could tell within 10 minutes of sitting in a meeting that Brady Cook was the guy mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, even physically out on the field. Like, like it, in my opinion, I was very impressed with him on the board mentally. I'm like, how, okay, how is he going to do that in practice? But you could just tell, right, Aaron, like you've been in those meetings, mm -hmm. like, all right, this guy gets it. Like, what are your reads? Where are you going? And they'd ask other quarterbacks and they'd get it, but it'd take a long time to answer. And he was just so on point. And I'm excited to see what he has. Like, I, I do think um, like the arm strength needs to improve to play at the next level, but I do think he's got a shot. Like I, I really mm -hmm. do. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how this year goes with him.